Well, good morning. It's Minister Tim here on a fine Sunday morning uh, here in Abington Church in uh, Gloucester, Virginia. Now, records indicate that uh, Abington Parish was formed uh, circa 1650. Its name derived from the colonists who emigrated here uh, from Abington, England. Now, the first church was uh, a wooden building probably located uh, close to the York or the Severn River. And in 1655, the parish completed the construction of its first brick church on land that was donated by Colonel uh, Augustine Warner. And uh, he was the maternal great-great-grandfather of George Washington. Now, the foundation of this church can still be found inside the uh, south wall of the church grounds. And around the church, as you can see, close by the church and a distance away, there is a uh, cemetery uh, of those who have departed this world. Stone mar gra markers uh, actually mark the grave sites uh, here in the churchyard. And it was it brings me a question, my brother. I wonder how many of these departed souls actually belong to the church. Uh, now, when I speak of the church, I'm not referring to a building per se. I'm rather referring to a body of believers one body with many members with Jesus Christ as the head see we can belong to a lo local church congregation and worship of course in a church building but the church we speak about is not bound by a building or a location rather it's a people and a person who belongs to this church uh, does so certainly in truth and in love. That's why we spoke last week that we must we must speak truth when we speak about the love of God. Uh, it's true God's love is universal and unconditional, but at the same time, God's love is certainly grounded in truth. Without the truth, the love we speak about can lead a person to a false sense of security. <clears throat> See, Jesus said these words recorded in Matthew's Gospel account chapter 7. Verse 21, <clears throat> he says, Not everyone, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, <clears throat> which is in heaven. Well, perhaps Jesus may be speaking of those who attend a church, but are not really part of the body of believers. See, James speaks in this regard in his letter, chapter 1, starting verse 20, where he says this, the wrath of God worketh not the righteousness of God. The wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness, superficiality of naughtiness, and receive the meekness that engraved word which is able to save your souls. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, He's like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholds himself and goes away and straight forth forget what manner of man he was. But see, whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and can continueth therein, being not a forget hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Well, then he says here in chapter 2. Uh, verse 26, he says, For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. My brethren, our works are not a means to our salvation. We don't earn salvation. Works don't make us a part of the body of believers. Works are a result of salvation received by faith in Jesus Christ. That's why the love of God must always be shared in the truth of God. And the truth of God found in Jesus Christ, God's Son, the mediator between God and man, and works will and must accompany true saving faith. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter in the kingdom of heaven. And he doeth do the will of my Father, which is in heaven. See, there are many people who regularly 
attend church, are happy to listen as God's word is spoken about, are happy to hear about that and hear how God wants to bless them, but are void of the true works of God the Father. The doors of the kingdom of heaven shut tight. And although they say, Lord, Lord, they will not enter. See, false hope has kept them outside when they thought they were in. Perhaps nobody actually told them the truth about God and all they knew about was the love of God. Some with no works at all, but many other claiming otherwise. And Jesus responds to those individuals as well. Here when he says this, still in Matthew's uh, Gospel account, chapter 7, verse 22, he says, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? Works done in the name of the Lord, they claim. More likely works done using his name, but not really in his name. See, in order to do works done in Jesus' name, a person must first be in Jesus. The scripture says this, it records in Ephesians chapter 2, starting in verse 8, says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his, merc his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has ordained that we should walk in them. Paul writes in Romans chapter 8, verse 1, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. See, truth be told, if I am not first in Jesus Christ, saved by grace through faith, my works will be outside of Jesus Christ. Even those that I might claim as good works. And then saying, Lord, Lord, look at the mighty works I have done in thy name. And expecting to hear some affirmation, instead Jesus exclaims, and then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. False hope kept them outside when they perhaps thought that they were in. Well, my brother, in a sober thought and warning, someone can claim to speak in the name of the Lord, even claim to have done wonderful works, but really never knew Jesus, and constantly Jesus saying in return, I never knew you. They never may have spoken about Jesus, but perhaps never confessed Jesus. My works to be done in Jesus' name, I must first confess Jesus, that Jesus is the Christ. He's my Lord, my Savior. Matthew Gospel account, chapter 10, verse 32, records these words, Jesus speaks, whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, will I, him I will confess also before my Father in heaven. But whoever shall deny me before men, him also will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. See, my salvation is not a result of my works. Rather, my works are a result of my salvation. Love of God, my brethren, always must be grounded in truth. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that, through the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned. He that believeth not is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So we can spend our time talking about how loving Jesus is. How he can heal the sick, raise the dead, bring sight to the blind, feed the hungry help the poor. But if we never get to the part where Jesus exclaimed this, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except me man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter, enter the kingdom of heaven. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, which was born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto ye, ye must be born again. 
See, without that understanding, being born again, just be sharing the love of Jesus, we give somebody false hope. Love of God must also be grounded in the truth of God. Ye must be born again. And Paul reaffirms this truth when he says that if thou confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus shall believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Born again to a new life of righteousness found in Jesus Christ, where our sins have been forgiven. The death penalty that we deserve, Jesus Christ pays for on the cross on our behalf. My salvation is not the result of my works. Rather, my works are a result of my salvation. Where Jesus says of our works, let your light shine so before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Our good works designed for others to see our good works and glorify our Father in heaven. My brethren, I pray that these truths of God found in Jesus Christ would be yours today. The scriptures are clear about God who desires all men to be saved, to come to the knowledge of the truth. There is one God, one media between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Amen.